How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week 13, and we have our final regular season game uh, of the season this week against Maryland. We're number two in the nation, sitting at 10-1, and one, with our one loss being to the number one team in the country in the Auburn Tigers. This is a game against the Terps that we should expect to win. Right now, two prospects visiting. That number might go up. I don't know if we have anybody available. Uh, and everything looks good for us. We're the higher overall team. We beat them in pretty much every statistical category except for the rush offense. They are number 16 in the country. Uh, and it has me worried. Uh, I'm not entirely certain that we are going to shut these guys down like we have some other teams. Uh, Maurice State apparently at this point is sixth in the nation for passing yards, which is a real surprise to me. But what's big is that they have the nation's leading rusher, Tyrone Weber, almost 1,500 yards. He will certainly eclipse that. He might break 1,600 uh, in the game against us. It's going to be a difficult task to stop these guys. We'll see what we can do, but I don't know. I certainly don't feel all that confident right away. Our top 25 polls I have actually fixed. I went through and got it all figured out. So now we have the college football playoff poll instead of the BCS and the AP poll instead of the media poll. But uh, I don't know. We're looking good. I don't think there's a whole lot of chaos that can happen. Well, I guess uh, weeks where you don't see a lot of ranked versus ranked matchups are the weeks where you will see the most chaos um, because that's where you're going to see the biggest upsets. But we do have Texas playing a ranked Oklahoma State. Florida plays at Coastal. We need the Teal Boys to be winning for our legacy. And just because we're always going to be fans of the Teal Boys. Uh, Cincinnati plays UCF. And Ohio State is going to play at Indiana. And this being near the end of the season means that conference standings are ever important. So let's just take a quick look at that. We are in the driver's seat. We can absolutely lose this final game and still make it to the Big Ten Championship. Who does it look like we're going to be playing against? Likely a number 21 Purdue who is 7-4. If they manage to lose and Nebraska wins out, it could be the Cornhuskers, who are currently number 16 in the country. But, uh, man, the rest of that division is looking a little bit worse for wear. Illinois, 2-8. 0-7 in conference is pretty brutal. Uh, we'll just go alphabetically through the list. CUSA, it's Louisiana Tech leading with Western Kentucky and UTEP trailing. Our two independents, Army and BYU, are having mediocre seasons. Army actually has his number 12 in the country, even though they're 7-3. and three. They have some pretty big wins, I think, this season. Um, they lost to the same Auburn team as us. They lost to Hawaii, and they lost to the current number 19, Oklahoma State. But they did just beat Georgia in overtime, so uh, that's a pretty big win. Meanwhile, BYU is just 5-6, and six, kind of squandering it. In the MAC, our old conference, it's Rutgers, who we sent down... Uh, when we replace them in the Big Ten, they're 8-2, and two, having some success in the MAC. Maybe this is where R what Rutgers needs to do in real life. <laughs> yeah, probably, I don't know. Rutgers fans don't kill me. They're 6-1 and one in conference being trailed by Central Michigan. In the Mountain West, we have Hawaii leading the way with Fresno State, New Mexico, uh, Boise State, Nevada all trailing behind. Hawaii, the only ranked team in the conference, though. And in the Pac-12, it is USC and Stanford atop of everything. Uh, Stanford just lost a shocker to Cal, who's having a, I mean, a winning season at the moment, but not a great one. Uh, and the Trojans will likely have to play that Stanford team, but they also have to get through UCLA and Notre Dame. And although they're undefeated in conference, they did just lose to Tennessee on the road last week. Uh, pretty bad loss, 17 to 31. It's a good Tennessee team, but uh, they had their dreams dashed kind of at the finish line. And the SEC, it's all Auburn, undefeated. I think maybe the only undefeated team left in the nation. Uh, hopefully we get a chance to play them in the playoffs. Should we make it there? I can't count the eggs before they hatch. We still have to win some games to make it. But uh, it looks like they'll be the number one seed. Even if they lose, they should be in a good spot. But who knows? Uh, I know people have asked where Alabama's at. They're 7-3 and three this year. Kind of an up year for them, honestly. 4-3 and three in a conference. Were their out-of-conference games impressive? Middle Tennessee, Arizona, and BYU? I mean, they won them pretty easily, but uh, I guess the real test is going to be the Iron Bolt. Can they play the spoiler to their rivals? Or uh, are they just going to get decimated like most of the teams that Auburn has played this year? The Sun Belt is kind of between Georgia Southern and Louisiana Lafayette. The ACC is kind of a three-way tie with Clemson, Georgia Tech, and Syracuse. 
The American is Cincinnati and USF. Cincinnati has to play UCF this week, so that's another big game. American coming down to the wire. And in the Big 12, we have uh, Oklahoma, Texas, and Oklahoma State all right up in there. Texas number three in the nation with just one loss. And, uh, well, next year they're going to be guaranteed one loss because they stole the best recruit of the nation, 92 overall guard Christian Grimmel, from us. Uh, so we're going to make sure that that is not a problem next year and we'll knock them out out of conference just uh you know as kind of a screw you right back at them so let's go ahead and get in towards this game i do want to point out that uh, they have the nation's leading rusher but we have the man leading the heisman race so the running back storylines in this game are going to be pretty big and it is a big senior day for us as uh maryland just a 75 overall at 74 offense and a 78 overall defense. So, uh, I mean, again, we're feeling confident, but if we can't stop the run, we could definitely be in trouble. Um, do they have uh, red pants? Yeah, there we go. We're going to go red pants for the Terps. And for us, we're going to go all green. Send the seniors off in their home uniforms. Let them look good in front of their parents. And we're going to hope to just contain again. So offensively they're terrible except for the running game they run really really well uh they do a decent job of holding opponents to a uh, minimal amount of rushing yards and a, not too many points but they're nowhere near as good as us so if we can just kind of get into our groove i mean we have the nation's sixth leading passer you know if we can get uh, more east state going that's going to look good for us i forgot to send our uh, prospects uh, any other prospects that we could potentially send to this game so we're, we're actually going to back out of this one and load back into it to make sure that we can get as many visits as possible uh but uh maurice tate jeff want to know devon royal all on hot streaks maurice tate up to an 89 overall this year his awareness continues to climb uh their top player a punter and then down to a right end and wide receiver in the mid 80s uh and they've got a left tackle questionable in this game if i'm maryland i probably tell them to buck it up and play through it. We did, in fact, have two guys ready to take their visits, so I'm glad they were doing this. The 76 overall athlete, PJ Ozoma, and the 77 overall athlete, Jonathan Westerkamp. Both of them eligible to come to this game, so uh, that's going to be super useful for our recruiting. We can go ahead and get this game started. And we can come on into the stadium right near Sun 2 for the last time in the Ipsy. Oh, man. White out, I guess, today. Didn't get the memo for the fans. Uh, <laughs> Maryland on the coin toss loses, even though they chose tails. Uh, so we're going to win the toss. Let's get the offense out there first. Let's uh, put on a show for the fans today. Should be a fun one, that's for sure, as uh, Rivera back to return. See what we can do. Jody Gentry needs to get a good block. If we see a couple of pancakes or if RJ could just get to the corner, he could be gone. 83, not going to get the tackle and open up senior day. It's the freshman leading the Heisman race and leading this game out to a 100-yard touchdown return on the kickoff. Well, I said that we were going to get the offense out first, but it'll be the defense that will see the field uh, as we didn't need the offense to find the end zone. 7 nothing. 10 seconds into this one. Well, now Clark can get us underway. Uh, hopefully we can have a, a good job gunning down here. Lewis looking for it, and we tried to use the hit stick. That's decent. We kept him inside the 20. Our playbook might be the thing that kind of hurts us in this game. We know that these guys are going to be running the football first, second, and third option. So what we can do to stop them is going to be important. A little triple option to the left as we had a little bit of lag there. We drop him for a loss of two. Quarterback didn't pitch it out. We might have lag spikes like that throughout the game as uh, reinstalling the mods so that we could get the right poll names. Uh, it's kind of made things a little bit laggy. What the heck just happened there? That was the greatest jump of the snap I've ever seen. Never had the chance to get the play underway. Even the replay didn't catch it. Whitaker was coming in motion uh, because they put a guy in motion. And he just jumped the snap fit through the gap and obliterated the quarterback and now it's smith who has 26 sacks on the season dropping them to force the three and out we got these guys backed up into their end, end zone no chance of a safety today unless the game completely glitches out but uh 
Oh man, fielding this ball basically at midfield feels really good for RJ Rivera. Can he make it uh, two touchdowns and two touches of the football? Cutting it back inside, he's making guys miss. Cutting it back and RJ Rivera, the 50 yard punt return for the touchdown. After taking the opening kick return, uh, 100 yards for the touchdown. He's got 14 points in two touches. The man is unstoppable. That was really good blocking and some really good running. I, I gotta give myself a little shout out on the stick skills there. I normally wouldn't have uh, that kind of ability to have the vision to find the end zone there, but we're already kicking it away. Defense is gonna have to do a lot of work before the offense sees the field. Is Maurice Tate even going to be able to see the field today? Uh, we'll expect the run on this one. Run to the right, and we stop it quickly. Definitely going to be difficult to uh, play this the way that I want, but we'll figure out how it's going to work quickly, hopefully. Quarterback scrambling. We know he's going to be able to run all day long, so we got to make a couple adjustments there. That's just good awareness to see that Sims had been upended and he would have some space to run. Uh, kind of going to expect to see some more runs. This one we bring the Blitz and Royal. They kind of got me shift into the right but the speed gets back for uh tackle at no gain i do think that as this game goes on they're going to be pushed into more and more difficult positions as they're going to be forced into passing downs this one nobody can get off the block man if richards pitches that one out he could have had a huge amount he's already injured oh that is devastating for maryland so it's the starting qb out for Maryland as it's third and three. They're going to be looking probably to run, I would imagine, here. Stepping back. No, he's going to look to throw. My coverage isn't very good, but it didn't need to be. We had a safety in the area, and we get the sack with Austin Sims. Just an abdominal strain for their QB, so he will be back in this game. Good news. Could have been a whole lot worse as, uh, man, could this be a disaster for Maryland? They're having to kick this star, Jay Rivera. He's already scored two touchdowns. Can't quite outrun number 27 there. Well, midway through this first quarter, we already have 14 points, but it's the offense's first time on the field as we will hand it off to RJ Rivera on a little counter. That's good for three yards. We're going to get a little bit weird with it. Uh, looking at a slip screen to Derek Bentley, just trying to get the completions early. You guys know how it goes. It's only good for a yard. This is not going to be an easy third down. See what we can do with this zone read option, man. They're going to be bringing a lot of pressure. This is not going to be easy. Going to need somebody to make a man miss, or the blocking is going to have to be really good, and it is. As Maurice Tate gets the yards and slides down to avoid getting tackled. Tell you what, I was not confident there, but the offensive line did a fantastic job as we're going to go a little end around, handing it off to Jody Gentry, who picks up a block, spins his way forward, and gets nine yards. All right, well, maybe a uh, pass completion possibility here for Maurice Tate as we will just be looking for something simple. B was wide open. I just don't think that he can complete that at this stage in the game. So I don't like to scramble this much, but these sliders make it pretty difficult to throw early. Let's go ahead and try to defeat that early with a little mid screen to Jeff Fontenot. He's got some blockers. Jeff Fontenot in some open space gets 17 yards. That was just really good blocking once again. Maurice Tate, again, we're looking at a screen. We get it to RJ Rivera. RJ's got some blockers. I think that could have been a touchdown. We're going to take the seven though, and that will probably end our first quarter. Clock down to zero. Threatening to score on the offense's first drive, but it's the special teams and most importantly, RJ Rivera that is the story of this game so far. The defense doing a good job getting off the field, but a kick return and a punt return for a total of 150 yards and two touchdowns is phenomenal. That combined with a nice seven play, 57 yard drive to this point has gotten us to the 10 yard line. And on the read option, it's gonna be a handoff to RJ Rivera who has the first and goal and four yards to add to his total. Both uh, quarterback and running back already heating up in this game as just throw it, Curtis into the end zone and Maurice Tate can add a passing touchdown onto it today as we are now up 21 to nothing. We are just over a quarter in, and this is the third time that Clark is kicking off, which is incredible to me, because we started with the football. Uh, <laughs> imagine if we would have elected the kick first. But we kick off number four here is Bo Tate. It's a mediocre return. 
I like that name a lot as we are going to be in pressure on this first down, hoping for the best feels like it's a run to the edge. We almost got to the quarterback, but we forced him to pitch it away and we're able to get the tackle on Tyrone Weber. If we can hold the nation's leading rusher to a, a small amount all game long, that would be massive. Calling it a run to the left and it is a toss out to the left and we're going to be there to stuff Weber for a loss of two. So call it a third and 13 as the starting quarterback comes back in on this play. See what we can do with Smith expecting this one to be a pass. We'll just kind of back the coverage off a little bit. Pressure getting there and Richards is going to get obliterated. He just came back from the injury and now it's a tied record for sacks in a season. Smith has 27. That's insane. So the defense blazes them once again. It's fourth and 20. And this punter is going to be kicking from his own end zone. Not the first time today. RJ Rivera will have a chance at a really good return. If he can just avoid that first tackle, RJ Rivera trying to avoid anything, <laughs> weaving his way down the sideline. It's just a 44 yard return, but immediately inside the red zone. This is absolutely absurd. In the game where we're not even really trying to run up the score, it's happening all too easy. Maurice State staying perfect through the air on the day as he's five for five, finding Mark Morris for nine yards. Got ourselves a second and one, and RJ's in. I don't feel confident at all. Just kind of feels like they are in a good spot, but I don't know. Flip the play, see if Robertson can get us a block, and we'll try to follow the blockers who just run to the edge and dive into the end zone. RJ's third touchdown of the day. Uh, so we're not even halfway through the second quarter, and now it's 28 0. It seems like everything is clicking here at the end of the season. And it does help that we are playing really bad opponents. Uh, we haven't played anybody above like 85 overall in weeks. So we know from the game against Sovereign that we definitely can lose. It just kind of, uh, you know, the fact that we have a good defense, but also we have Brett Venables as our defensive coordinator. And I think he has absolutely changed the way this is working is Avery Binky can't get the tackle. Lucky Eddie Joseph went out of bounds. I don't know why, but I feel like I said Avery Binky. Avery Binkley getting that one. Uh, Weber still in the backfield. Kind of expecting a run from him. Pressure not going to get there. Quarterback has a man wide open. The late cross gets the first down as they get as close to midfield as they have been all game. That's just the second pass completion for this quarterback today. As he will just throw it away. Well, there's his first in completion. <laughs> He felt the pressure. We were rushing five and it worked. When we get those stops on first down, boy, does it make it a lot easier on second and third, even if they run the football, which I kind of expect, but no, they are feeling the pressure early. Quarterback just has to get rid of it again. He does not want to take another sack. He's already feeling it today. So once again, we can just come out in our cover six. You know, they are playing an interesting set here, but... I feel relatively confident that they will pass the football. We just have to defend it over the middle. Can somebody get there? Can Ron Johnson the third get the interception? Oh, he ran into a teammate. Absolutely ball hawked the route and things just continue to go poorly for these Terrapins. 12 total yards for Maryland. We have 83 yards of offense, but that doesn't include all the special teams. Is we're going to go play action. We got to get out of the pocket. Right bumper could be open. Uh... This is just a heave. Jeff Fontenot, that, that's such a broken play. That should not have worked. They brought the pressure on that play action and immediately had a guy in the pocket. So just felt like I had to get out of that. RJ Rivera, it's supposed to be a weak counter. We're going to bring Ryan rushing over as an extra blocker on the side. Uh, just try to create chaos. Uh, Rivera breaks a tackle. Oh, no, he's running backwards. <laughs> he lost 14 yards. Oh, I tried to be cheeky. But he lost his balance and so just unable to outrun everybody. Go in the other direction. That's a bummer. <laughs> Second and 24. It's been a while since we've seen a number that high on our end. But uh, maybe the triple option. Maurice Tate going to have the pitch man open. RJ Rivera gets a block and RJ's going to score if there's no penalties. So he loses 14 on one. Gains 28 the other. And it averages to 14 to carry. Great timing on the pitch from Maurice Tate. That's the fourth touchdown for Rivera. Truly a Heisman day for him so far. 35 to nothing with 2.09 left in the first half. Uh, Maryland will get the ball to start the third quarter. So, you know, it's not like we're going to continue to pile it on as much in the second half. And also, once we get our lead, I might think about bringing the second team offense in. 
do feel like I have to specify offense and not defense, but that's just because our off or our second team defense has been atrocious all season long. Avery Binkley again missing a tackle in open space. That could be a problem. Jeff Fontenot with a strained back is out for the game after that really big catch. The he really shouldn't have caught. Uh, but that's gonna make it difficult. They took a timeout on that first play. And then they throw a crossing route for five yards and a first down there. Kind of surprisingly, no timeout taken on that one. We're gonna use a green, try to defend this flat, and oh, they dropped it. Ooh, that's good news. Four and eight for James Richard so far in the day. Switched it up for a couple of plays to give them a zone look, just uh, to remind them that it was an option. Second and 10, Weber uh could be open quarterback scrambling i missed the tackle strip the ball if we're lucky no so he gets the first down oh that's a bummer i left the uh the fullback wide open but he decided he was just gonna do it with his feet probably the wise decision as they will step back on this one and again having to throw it away our coverage is doing well enough that we're causing some problems in the pocket and we'll just keep using binkley I don't know if he's able to tackle Joseph in open space yet, but uh, it could be useful. Quarterback all the time in the world. He's heaving it deep. Green, he stopped running. He stopped running. Oh, that's unacceptable. Well, got to expect a run on this one. So we are bringing pressure. We'll see if we can stop it. Run to the left, potentially. No, they go to the right. Blocking, not good enough. Oh, they almost had it. He broke a tackle and got a yard, but he's still short. <laughs> I'm going to expect them to be running on every single play of this drive. They got to give it to Weber at some point. Calling this one a run to the left. We'll see if uh, I'm correct. No, they're going to step back to throw. Coverage is okay. Quarterback all the time in the world. He's trying to run. And we get up there to get this stop and force the third and goal. They take their second time out. No, the clock's moving. Well, I don't know what to do here. I'm calling this a blitz or a, a run. False start. That saves us tremendously. So in the third down, a cover two spy expecting them to go to the air. What can we do as they will step back to pass? Short of the line again. We tackle him. I'm taking the time out there with 35 on the clock. And it is the field goal formation out for these guys. So uh, the cowards way out. They eliminate our chance at the shutout, which is kind of devastating. Or no, they're going to fake it. And we stop them. Oh, all right, well, not the coward's way out. I, I feel like we almost had a decent chance to block it, but turnover on downs. Well, this is a dangerous spot for me to be trying this, but four verts uh, as we will look for a miracle with 32 seconds and two timeouts left, trying to stay in the pocket. Just got to get rid of it. Morris comes down with it. Yeah, there could have been a penalty there, but Mark Morris streaking down the sideline. I got to get out of bounds. Yep, that was a clipping. Oh, that's so frustrating. It was Chris Rutger getting called for it, so it brings us all the way back to the 28. Most importantly, we lost a bunch of time. 23 seconds now, as we will just continue to step back, looking to throw. Right bumper might have been open. Maury State will have a chance to scramble for a decent chunk of yards, though, before going out of bounds. Now it's 15 seconds. I almost have to be looking just at uh, pure bombs here, but I just don't know if we have enough time. To do anything else, this is uh, this is interesting to say the least. They're bringing a lot of pressure, tossing it up for RJ Rivera. We're lucky it's not picked off. Morris actually almost had a chance to get that on the second effort. They had me panicking as they rushed seven on the play, but uh, they did a phenomenal job of covering everybody in space. We've got basically everybody in that's uh, that's a backup at this point, which is kind of devastating. But a could be wide open. It's Tyler, not wide open. <laughs> I always say that. I always say wide open. They're never wide open. And somebody got injured there. I think it might have been Maurice Tate. So five seconds left. That's not good news at all. He has the wind knocked out of him. So we're just going to force him to play for this last down. I'm not even sure if he can get a throw all the way to the goal line from here. Uh, but we're going to try. Maybe we won't need to. Chris Rutger, if he can catch this. He comes down with it with blockers. Into the end zone, he gets tackled in 59 yards at the end of the half. I don't understand what just happened. They covered the Hail Mary terribly. One on three there. And even though we run into a teammate tackled over the defender, 42 to nothing here. What a fantastic way to end the half. I hope that Maurice feels like he's not too mad that we brought him in while he was feeling kind of cruddy. That was a thing of beauty.
So again, 42 to nothing at the half. I mean, we didn't do anything wrong. Maybe two plays where we could have stopped the defense a little bit better. Maybe I had a, a read or two that I could have made better on offense, but everybody executing on both sides of the line. Uh, this game's over. We don't need to play the remaining two quarters. We're going to do it just to, I don't know, maybe uh, do some stat padding, uh, get some younger guys some experience, but this one is, it's done. It's a three mile an hour headwind for Clark as uh, this is going to be a very feelable kick. He's going to grab it at the seven yard line. Napoleon, what a, uh, I mean, the kid is impressive. Just 93 yards of offense. Uh, for Maryland in the, that first half. The question is, do they go back to their old ways and continue to try to run, or do they pass? They're going to step back to pass. They're going to be now uh, less than 90 yards of total offense as Avery Rawls gets the sack. I mean, I left my man open for a solid, like, five seconds, but uh, I guess life finds a way, and things continue to just go really, really well for us. Left the running back open, but he dropped it. I guess that's why he has 1,500 running yards on this season. If you can't rely on your man to uh, hold on to the football, you're not going to pass it to him. They go in motion, expecting the pass. They will step back, and the quarterback gets sacked again. There's just nothing that he can do out of that formation. George Smith with the tackle, and that will officially give him the NCAA record for sacks in the season. 28 takes that from Derek Thomas, the Bama left end. This is the third time this game that the uh, punter for Maryland is punting from his own end zone. I feel for the guy, certainly not the day he wanted to have, as we're just going to try to switch the field here. RJ, if there's no penalties, is looking really good on this one. Yeah, just kind of ran out of room. The, the short field makes it hard to get those returns where we switch the field that much. Nonetheless, uh, last game, we didn't have anybody on fire on offense. This game is looking pretty solid for almost all 11 players. There's Brian Curtis with a first and goal. There were three Maryland players in the area. Nobody could defend him. Eight of 10 for Maurice Tate. Two of those incompletions are, or both of them, I guess, are pretty much on Hail Marys near the end of the half. So, I mean, why did they even show up today? They can't play defense against us. Now, I can't be too rude. They did get us into a second and 24 earlier in the game. We turned it into a massive 48-yard touchdown, but they got us there in the first place, and Stone? I mean, there wasn't even a gap there. I just ran forward, tried to get north, and he created one with the strength. The wide receiver does that. And so now it's 49 to nothing. 418 left in the third. This is just incredible. And, uh, you know, normally I would say we would bring in our second string offense, but what that would do is it would put Albert Johnson at the quarterback. I guess maybe we're going to have to put Maurice as the second stringer and then put the second string offense in. I will probably wait a drive or two until we know that RJ Rivera is kind of done for the day. Typically, he does a ton of work and then gets tired and has to tap out near the end of it. So that's what we're going to go with, as this one should have been picked off by Greeny Mist. Avery Binkley tracking his man down. Ooh, that's deadly. I went for the pick and it did not work. And probably need to just come out in the dime exclusively. We've been running a lot of nickel strong here, but they've stopped running the football. So what's that about? His green makes up for it with an interception. He stayed on his feet for a little bit too. That one, he just forced the throw a little bit too early. Green jumps in front of the route. Poorly placed ball, poorly timed ball. And the defense stops him again. Well, at this point, unless I make a mistake, we're now just minus two on the turnover differential for the season, which is really impressive. I just let Maurice get obliterated on that triple option. 226 yards of offense for us, but that doesn't include all the yards that we have, and we know that's a ton. Uh, this one, a run towards the edge. That dude got off the block in a weird way. Kind of glitched further than I thought he would, and so that's a loss of four, third and ten now. Well, I didn't want to have to step back to pass, but here we are, Maurice Tate. Man, I just don't like our offensive line. As B was open, just run for it. I just eh, try to be safe there. It feels weird still having half of the third quarter left to kind of just uh, relegate myself to running and burning out the clock. But, I mean, we are essentially in playoff mode now. There's no reason they keep us out 
if we win the Big Ten Championship, and looking at the other side, it seems like that could happen. I mean, it's either Purdue or Nebraska, and we know that we can beat both of those teams pretty handily, so we just got to stay healthy at this point. Been tremendously blessed to not have any major injuries. In fact, I might need to look into the sliders to make that more common, but we will just uh, try to, again, keep people healthy, get everybody their yards on the ground, and let RJ just continue to get tackled in the backfield. They, that's the only time they're stopping us on offense is when we hand it off to him. That'll put us in a second and 13 situation. RJ still in on this read option, and Maurice is going to keep it. And Maurice needs to slide down. I hit the button, though, a little bit too late. Uh, he already had the wind knocked out of him once this game. Certainly the last thing that we need for him is to just uh, get popped out again. So we'll look to pass on third and five. Back up. Wide receivers in. A is wide open. That's Brian Curtis. I tried to step back on him, but it doesn't work. I'm fine. We don't need to score on every play. In fact, the offense being on the field is more conducive to us burning this clock out. That gives us another first down to work with. Another handoff to RJ. Oh, my God. Look at that. Their, their defensive line figures it out only when RJ's getting the ball on a handoff. Second and 12. Derek Bentley's going to get the carry. And look at the hole from the offensive line. <laughs> it's actually kind of comical. Maybe they are starting to turn on RJ. Big shot freshman maybe saying the wrong things to his linemen in practice. Because that's what it feels like. I just made the wrong read there. Again, though. RJ Holt carrying it, and he loses yards. Uh, he's, he's very vulnerable in the backfield today. This is our first uh, non-converted third down as we're going to go for it on fourth and two. Uh, I'm going to let the clock burn out a couple more seconds. I want this to be the final play of the third quarter, regardless of the outcome. So three seconds left. Snap it, hand it off to Derek Bentley, cutting it across. That was not how I expected him to cut. He went almost completely horizontal. I was just trying to take, like, a step to the left, <laughs> unfortunately, to turn over on down. So 49 nothing into the fourth quarter. Just try to finish this one off. I guess the question that we'll have to ask ourselves for this start of this quarter is, what is it that they're planning to do on defense? Quarterback, well, I guess they're going to look to pass, and he's going to get sacked and lose a yard. Again, I got to remind you guys, this is a 74 overall offense that Maryland is fielding. And we have Brent Venables as our defensive coordinator. So things are uh, going to tend to get out of hand. That one should have been picked off. That's just uh, bad awareness from Moore. Toss that one up to a wide receiver who was completely blanketed and didn't get punished for it. First and 10. Using Ron Johnson on this one. And they're going to have to throw it away to avoid another sack. I think at this point, James Richards maybe has been sacked as many times as he's completed a pass. And he's 8 of 16 on the day. <laughs> Second and 10. Again, stepping back. Again, firing. And he's got a man open on the out route. Man coverage. Starting to break down a little bit there. Ryan Perkins, the man getting that catch, uh, has four of their catches. 120 yards of offense for him. So he's definitely the main factor on offense. And, well, that was all too easy. User Smith for a play. We get a free sack and drop him for a loss of seven. Hopefully coming out in the uh, zone kind of. Threw off the quarterback just enough, expecting them to keep passing. Second and 17, they will look to throw. And over the middle, Devin Royal playing way too deep on that one. Needs to step up. They get 24 yards and a big first down across midfield. Deep safeties haven't really done us any good so far today. So we're going to just have one. Uh, kind of cover one lurk. Hope that that works for us. Uh, quarterback scrambling again, trying to strip the football anytime this guy runs with as many times as he has seen the turf today. I think it would be foolish for us not to just try and strip it. He's already been injured once, tried to ruin his day, and <laughs> my goodness, this is just not fair. This offensive line battered and bruised. 0 for 6 on third downs. This one from about a mile away, not feeling confident that they'll be able to get it. I see the curl routes. Avery Binkley again can't get the open field tackle, but Whitaker's there to stop it short of the line again. And these guys are looking to go for it. This could actually be a run. We haven't seen that in a little bit. Quarterback all the time in the world has the out route. Avery Binkley was not there, but he dropped it. It's a turnover on downs. That is just brutal. 22 runs to 11 passes for us, which seems like a low number, but I guess it's the truth is we'll just hand it off and get our five yards. 
And I've gone ahead and put in the second string offense. So let the backup linemen and all that get some carries. Uh, but we're keeping Maurice State in because he's our game manager. And if we have to throw, Albert Johnson's not going to complete a single pass. Four of five on third downs. I don't feel confident about this one. We are going to just hand it up up the middle as Tyler comes in motion just to kind of fool him a little bit. <laughs> okay. That was a great run. Derek Bentley gets 14 on that one. Just over two minutes left in this game. How about a read option? Got to keep Maurice a threat, but also we got to slide tackle anybody who comes near us. And I think uh, this might be our final play not in the clock burn mode. Uh, as Derek Bentley fighting his way forward for even more yards. Well, it is a third down. So for our conversion percentages, we're going to try this. Lionel Goodwin, the third stringer in. He's going to get his first handoff of the day in a big spot. And he's going to get six yards as that'll allow us to burn below one minute. And we're going to have to do it twice, but we can just knee this one down. Again, 314 yards of offense. But the uh, the total yards, uh, including the special teams, is off the charts. Maurice Tate back out in the victory formation. Takes a knee and we can just let this one burn to a close. Certainly feels good. 49 to nothing. That was a really good shutout. I actually didn't even realize that we had the shutout going in my mind. Uh, I forget that they faked the field goal when I called them cowards. Uh, Archie Rivera, 250 all-purpose yards and four total touchdowns on the day. Continuing the Heisman campaign, and we shut down the nation's leading rusher. He came into this game with almost 1,500 yards. I wouldn't be surprised if we kept him under 30, but RJ Rivera, the opening kickoff, the, the early punt return. I mean, the dude was electric. He's, he's a true freshman. He's like 70-something overall. It's absolutely incredible what this guy's capable of. Very excited to see what he can do against some more impressive opponents uh, in our postseason run. I can't believe how well that worked. Didn't even have to score in the fourth quarter to make it look impressive. 28 second quarter points uh, is phenomenal. I'm actually kind of surprised that we only had 14 in the first quarter. Held them to negative 18 rushing yards and 190 through the air. Uh, we didn't need a lot of yards because we had good field position the whole game. Uh, and defensive player of the game, RJ Rivera with his nine carries and 13 yards, which is not that impressive, but the four total touchdowns is... And then George Smith, four tackles, four for loss. They were all sacks as a team, eight sacks on the day. That is incredible as George Smith, again, sets the NCAA record for sacks in a season, and he's not done yet. So officially, we end the regular season 11-1, and one, and we can go ahead and sim. I guess technically we could move up in the rankings because we have back-to-back -back bye weeks in weeks 14 and 15 before the conference championship so who knows maybe we can just sit back and kind of rest up as we watch the rest of the nation beat up on each other we might also be able to get some good recruiting asias long the 75 overall right end commits so does the 74 overall corner joe fox hinkley cager commits to coastal we can't be upset with that tavita robinson locks us out we had some visits we have guys ready to visit those are the low luck chiefs so we'll just send them to this first buy Coach of the Year finalist, uh, finalist for the Heisman, the Politnikoff, the Lombardi, Thorpe, Jett, and Nagurski, Butkus, Benderick, Walker, Maxwell, O'Brien, Guy, NCAA Player of the Week. My goodness, uh, we just got all the XP that we've needed in the past few weeks in this one, uh, this one sim through. That's, uh, I don't know, a little bit disappointing that we couldn't have had it happen a couple of weeks ago, but I, I see how it works. Like already we're almost halfway through this level. We are number one in the nation. Auburn lost, or they just had us jump them? No, Auburn loses to LSU, so no undefeated teams left. Chaos reigns supreme this year, 11-1. We are standing at the top of the college football playoff rankings as the Auburn Tigers lose in overtime to LSU, who jumps into the rankings. And uh, my goodness, that is really brutal for them, and now they have to go up against... A now ranked Bama, so Alabama must have won another one. Florida lost to Coastal. Great news for us is the Teal Boys jump up to 16th in the polls. Uh, Oklahoma State lost a touchdown game to now number two Texas. And again, we want to destroy Texas. If we can come up against them in the national championship and absolutely obliterate them, I would love to have that opportunity. Hopefully that doesn't bite us in the butt, though, and we just lose. Uh, Army took a loss, and... 
Nobody dropped out of the polls, so that's interesting. I don't know if they can out of the coaches' poll. Not a unanimous number one. Those votes are spread all over the place, all the way down to number nine, Stanford getting a first place vote. Uh, and in the AP poll, still not unanimous. It's between us and Texas, but Syracuse splitting the gap. No first place votes, but must have a ton of second and third. As uh, the Orange sitting at number two, probably a good chance to win the ACC. They just have a game against a five and six NC State on their road to come up against, but... Our playoff picture is definitely looking more and more interesting as these weeks go by. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. Our next one, I don't know. It might be a really, really short one because we have two bye weeks. Uh, and also, I'm going on a little vacation. Literally, while you're watching this, I am not able to record uh, because I'm away from my computer. So in the interest of making it a little bit easier for me to get the required amount of uploads for this vacation so that I don't miss a day, we might just have a really short bye week episode uh, that's just like comes out tomorrow or maybe in two days, but then we post the third one immediately after that. I want us to be able to spend a decent amount of time looking at conference championship matchups uh, and play our conference championship game without that episode being ridiculously long. So I guess you guys will find out in the very near future what I decided to do with that. But as for this one, that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this game, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And then consider maybe becoming a member. Uh, tier 2 and up channel members are going to have a perk coming up soon where they will get to name one of our committed recruits. So if you've been eyeing one of these guys that we've gotten, and we have gotten a lot of very good recruits committed and we have some more lined up. Uh, but if that's something that you're interested in, again, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a channel member. There's a few other perks that are listed if you go and click on the become a member or the join button. After you've done all that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. So also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, uh, and our community Discord, as well as the College Football Revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.